Hey guys, Silenced here and welcome back to another video. Today we are going to be discussing some of the recent updates that Jagex has implemented as well as some of the upcoming updates that you guys can expect. So first let's talk about some of the recent updates added to the game. So on June 10th a few pretty nice game updates were added and most of these involved smithing. And so smithing was made more AFK, which is an excellent thing in my opinion. So now you are able to have multiple unfinished items at once. And once you finish an item, you will just instantly start working on the next unfinished item. So that is why smithing is much more AFK. Um, you'll get some more XP per hour because of this, which is also really nice. And another little addition that they added is that the progress per swing has been increased for all levels of heat. Um, so it pretty much just means you will be able to smith more bars per hour and essentially get more XP per hour. And this update is pretty great as it, it better aligns with a lot of the player's wishes when it comes to smithing. I know a lot of people found it a little too tedious and slower XP per hour after the mining and smithing update. Um, so this update is sure to change that. The next change that was made involved the God Wars Dungeon 2. And more specifically the drop table. So stone spears have been a huge disappointing drop to get when bossing ever since they were released. So Jagex finally decided to fix this. And to fix this they have changed the Rune Stone Spear drop from Telos to the Small Bladed Rune Salvage, which will up the profit of that drop by a lot. Um, also, the Adamantite Stone Spirits have been replaced with Rune Stone Spirits, which are a little bit more valuable. As for all of the other God Wars 2 bosses, so Vindicta, Hellware, Gregorvich, and the Twin Furies, uh, the frequency of the Necrite and Phasmatite Stone Spirits has been reduced across all of these bosses. So this should essentially boost the GP per hour for all God Wars 2 bosses, which is really nice. Another neat update that had to do with smithing was uh, they added upgraded armor spikes. Um, and first, if you don't know what armor spikes are, they are a consumable item that can inflict damage to enemies attacking um, from adjacent tiles. And so you can make 1,000 of these armor spikes just from one Elder Rune bar. And so for armor spikes to actually activate, the following must be met. Um, so pretty much you will need melee weapons, um, you'll need your torso and leg armor to be melee, and then the player must be attacked, and the enemy must be directly adjacent to the player. So those are all the conditions for the armor spikes to work. And on screen now you can actually see me using some of these armor spikes uh, just on some abyssal creatures. Um, and uh, that reflect damage of 99, that is the armor spikes working so it doesn't do too much damage to, but it would boost your uh, DPS by a little bit so it is a pretty nice um, update and of course the uh, upgraded armor spikes are a little bit better as I mentioned earlier and so these spikes will deal the damage equivalent to your smithing level which is why it's dealing 99 for me I have 99 smithing and the update really just added uh, new upgraded armor spikes that you can craft, um, 1,000 for one concentrated alloy bar. And these armor spikes have a 10% chance to deal 10 times damage of the regular armor spikes. And also, if you are wielding a shield, they will just deal a double damage, which is pretty interesting. And so the upgraded auto heater has also been added to the game. And this improved auto heater will have a toggable overheat mode, which will reheat your item to 60% when the heat reaches 0% at a cost of 50 coal. 
So this is pretty nice. Before, the auto heater would only reheat your item when you finish the item. So now this will make uh, AFK smithing much easier. Um, so it's a pretty nice update. Um, again, really helping smithing, making, making it more AFK and uh, more XP per hour. And then the last notable addition to this update was the Spiked Masterwork Armor, which is just a cosmetic update. Another exciting update that came along with the recent RS3 mobile news is the addition of three more free action bars. And I'm especially happy about this as I use all six of my action bars right now. And three more will definitely make combat much easier. I'll be able to make a few more different uh, action bars for different combat styles. So that is really nice. And then the main reason Jagex actually decided to make this change is to make mobile have the same kind of UI mode and features as the desktop version. So they're really trying to do this and allowing people to have more action bars will help them with mobile and they want to do the same for the desktop version. And this is also the main thing that Jagex discusses about RuneScape Mobile in their most recent newsletter. Um, this means that they are currently focusing on ways to make mobile work and run very similar to the desktop version. The most dif difficult part about this uh, is making the combat system work on mobile, which is you know what I think. Um, and that is probably what is taking RS3 Mobile so long to be released. And unfortunately, there still is not a set release date for RuneScape 3 Mobile. Now looking at some of the upcoming updates that we have, and they are pretty exciting. Um, so first, I wanted to talk about the Land Out of Time. Um, so there is a nice little teaser trailer on the RuneScape website. And from what we currently know, there will be a brand new island that uh, you'll be able to explore. Um, there's going to be a new hunter method called Big Game Hunter, where we will be able to hunt dinosaur-looking creatures, so that that is pretty cool. Um, this island should also bring a range of new slayer creatures and even a new agility course, along with much, much more. So the update is supposedly going to be released on June 24th. Um, so that is pretty exciting. It will add a lot to the game and make it a little bit uh, more exciting. Check out these brand new features. Um, so definitely stay on the look for that. And the last update that I wanted to talk about. So this is a potential update. Right now they are doing a weapon diversity beta. And I actually made a separate video on this, um, so I will be linking that down in the description. But essentially what this is, is they are, are going to be putting abilities on types of weapons. So, for example, I'm using magic now. The air spell, it has a specific ability. Uh, it actually boosts your armor. Uh, then they have the water spell. So this actually allows you to heal yourself and you kill targets. Um, the earth spell... Gives you a damage boost when your target is bound and the fire spell um, the fire spell is a little bit confusing it uh, has something to do with combust and it essentially just does more damage per second and then you would see these same kind of variety of effects with your different melee weapons uh, your different ranged weapons and uh, so on and so forth so this is a pretty exciting update and if you guys do want more uh, details into this then definitely check out that video that is in the description. Um, it is only a beta right now. They're not even sure if they're going to implement it in the game, um, but they are taking a lot of feedback. I think it's something that's really cool and that they probably will implement because I think a lot of people do like it. Uh, it does make combat a little bit more complex, but uh, it is definitely interesting. Anyway, guys, I really hope you did enjoy this video. There are so many exciting updates coming right around the corner, especially the Land Out of Time, which will be coming to us in just the next couple of weeks. But anyway guys, I really hope you did enjoy, and subscribe for more RuneScape 3 content. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.